Hello, I'm Dwayne Lesner from Technical Marketing at Nutanix, and I want to talk to you today about getting your own personal get out of jail free card. What I'm referring to is having a secondary copy of your virtual machines in a different location. That different location is going to be Nutanix clusters on AWS. Regardless of why you want to move your applications into AWS, being a migration or maybe for DR, you do get to use native tooling uh, with either use case. So it could be protection domains. You could use Leap. Uh, Nutanix has a other product called Move, which is really efficient at migrating applications, even from non-Nutanix environments into AWS that can be moved. So it is really flexible and really either or, the process is mostly the same for both. Now, if we take a look at an existing environment that we have set up. We have the AWS environment. We do have this management subnet uh, already created. It's got um, a cluster already deployed. We have Prism Central running on-prem. Now for migration, you only need one. It could be on-prem. Uh, you probably more likely want it in AWS since that's going to be the final resting zone for a DR event. You do want to because if one side goes down, Prism Central is responsible for enacting the recovery plans, which is essential for bringing the workload up. Um, but as far as replication go, Prism Central is not a single point of failure. As soon as we have a protection policy, which, which gets applied to the assigned virtual machines, the storage controllers will start replicating it. So it's pretty easy setup because all the software is included. A, for this demo, we have an uh, application uh, that's consisting of a SQL server and a web server, which have been assigned to a category, so they're protected. And the storage controllers on-prem are replicating through a VPN link to our storage controllers here, which has already been opened using the AWS security groups, which are integrated into the product. Mm -hmm. Now, this link here could be uh, Direct Connect, it could be a transit gateway. Um, we're really flexible on that side, so it's not something that you need to uh, linger on. If we take a look at the environment, what we are getting at here is that we do have this uh, protected workload sitting in this 160 subnet. You see here that we do have the same subnet available in AWS. This isn't a stretch layer two, but with proper routing rules, you can create the same subnet. So if you are going to fail over an entire subnet, you can actually maintain all of the IPs automatically. Uh, there are other options for changing the IPs, which can be done with recovery plans in an automated fashion. Uh, but this is one use case that uh, we can cater to as well. Um, so we're just ensuring that from the AWS side that we're only routing traffic over to the management subnet in the on-prem side. Uh, we want our storage controllers to still talk to the other storage controllers in AWS. So with that, let's take a look at our environment. In our clusters portal, we do have one cluster running out of the Frankfurt region of four hosts. If we go into that cluster, uh, we can see all of the cluster details, the hosts that are making up the cluster. Uh, we would have the ability to update or increase the number of nodes um, through update capacity automatically in case of a DR event. So it's a pretty simple process to increase the nodes or shrink them back down. And um, so with that, we have our cluster running. It's just the same uh, as it were a normal cluster. And we can take a look at that in a bit. If we go to our on-prem side, so this is my on-prem Prism Central. It's managing a vSphere cluster. We have an on-prem AHV cluster and we have our Acme database cluster, which is sitting in AWS. So the protection policies are already created. So if we go into policies, uh, here we have a protection policy. 
The protection policy is really just applying uh, RPO, so recovery point objective for our workload. If we take a look at the this current AWS DR, we see that we have our on-prem cluster going to our Acme database cluster in AWS. We can set individual schedules based on you know when they fail over, how to modify the local snapshots, uh, but we can create one for both sides. So if they fail over, everything will be consistent. Uh, here it's set for one hour. Um, you could do minutely. If your link has the ability to do synchronous, it actually could do that. Uh, we will leave this at hourly, um, but you'll notice we're using a roll-up schedule, so making really efficient use of our snapshots. Um, they are space efficient, so we're only you know tracking the deltas for every snapshot. So your initial seed into AWS is going to be everything, uh, but then after that, it's only the changes. Likewise, failing back into your on-prem environment is only going to be the deltas uh, between the, the snapshots on both sides. Um, so that is once the schedule has been applied to our virtual machines via category. So here are two categories that are being used, Acme SQL Dev and Acme Web Dev. And so we have two VMs, a SQL Server and a Web Server that it's being applied to. Um, so we are good to go there. Once the policy is applied, the storage controllers will start replicating that into uh, our running AWS cluster, which already has uh, VPN connectivity. And then the, the next step after that is to uh, enact a recovery plan with Leap. So the recovery plan is you know, a step-by-step -step procedure for power on sequence and ensuring networking. So if I go into migrate into AWS and hit update, <clears throat> um, so we have the recovery plan name, a description, we have our source and destination clusters. Here we can have our power on sequence. You can have up to 20 stages, so it can be quite complex. We have our SQL server going first. We have a web server uh, followed. We could set a delay uh, if needed, and you can also add um, scripts as well to your virtual machines if maybe you have some custom work that you need to perform. And here on the network mapping, um, we have our on-prem network going into our AWS network, and we see that they are the same. Um, so we do have that routing in place. Um, so it is going to fail everything over in the event that something catastrophic happens to our on-prem side, we'll be covered. If we need more control, uh, maybe we're going into a different subnet, we do have this custom IP mapping as well. So with that being configured, the only thing that we need to do is now run the failover. So we hit failover. We notice that there is a test option as well uh, if we want to have that flexibility or auditors. So we'll do a plan failover. The plan failover is good because it acts as a migration. It's gonna shut everything down and then take one more clean snapshot. So our on-prem cluster moving to our uh, cluster in AWS. Uh, our two VMs are showing up. We hit failover. So we have initiated the failover and then we can click on the uh, failover plan to see what steps are performing. So here's our failover in action. If we click on the failover, we can get a detailed uh, report of the sec. So we're currently uh, doing the validation. So now we can see by the migrating of the VMs that the replication step is occurring. Both of the virtual machines have been recovered and now the, the failover plan will enact the correct uh, boot ordering. So the SQL server powered on first followed by our web front end. So we are um, pretty much good to go. So everything's passed. Our workload is now in AWS. If we go and take a look at uh, this uh, VM here, SQL fin acme one go back into our management. So if we go by out, we can see that this virtual machine is now 
sitting in AWS on our bare metal EC2 instance. Um, and it has maintained its uh, 160 IP. So uh, simple as that. So in short, uh, doing DR into AWS is the exact same as doing DR to any other on-prem cluster to another on-prem cluster. Um, it is the exact tooling. The replication is hardware-based and very efficient for um, sending your data across. And the network connectivity can barely be anything supported by AWS. Using clusters on AWS for DR or migration can be a really fast way on demand to protect your workloads or move them for a variety of different use cases. Thanks for watching.